Hi everybody, Cindy here with Pathways Homestead. We are all packed up and ready to go to the Ozarks Homesteading Expo. Got the chicken plucker. Got my canning supplies. Gary's in the truck running. <laughs> I think he's ready to go. Where are we going? Huh? Where are we going? Oh, crazy. Crazy. We're going crazy. <laughs> Girls, I'm going with him. Going to the Ozarks Homesteading Expo. Yep. Going to Missouri. Going, going to Missouri. Going to Missouri. First, we're going to Gary's parents. We're going to stay with them because they're an hour away from the expo. We're super excited and ready to get going on our trip. All right, y'all. We made it. We are at the Ozarks Homesteading Fe Expo. I want to call it a festival. I have no idea why. Expo. It it's both. It's both. Okay. So we're going to find our building and get set up for Canning 101. Hey guys, here we are at the Ozarks Homesteading Expo and we found Simply Jan. Oh, that's Gary. I got it the wrong way. We found Jan and the boss man and Gary. Of course, we haven't lost him we're yet. We're not sure who he is. Uh, and we're not. Oh, yeah, he's called <laughs> Homeless guy you picked up. Yeah, homeless guy. I thought he was cute. Felt bad I thought he was cute. Yeah, let's pick him up. Yeah, you need your glasses. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he was cute, so I just picked hey, him up. So, we are having a good old visit. Hi guys, we're Bear Roots Homestead. Um, we just moved here from San Diego, California, and we are starting from scratch. So we bought 22 acres, we cleared it ourselves, we're going to build our house ourselves and do a little bit of everything. So my name is Cindy Carvel. My husband Gary and I homestead a small patch in Kansas. We have 11 acres. Um, we tip, on a typical year produce 85 to 90 percent, not 5 percent of our food. That's meat, vegetables, milk, dairy, everything. We're located in Ava, Missouri. I've been making cheese for my own company for three years now. Yeah. This is a nice size event. This is pretty good. How many, is this is the first year here? First year here, okay, at the Home Setting Expo. I know they've had years previous. I was not at any of those. But I'm glad to be here today. And I've seen a lot of people I've met before, a lot of new, a lot of old faces, a lot of new faces. So it makes it really exciting. I love hearing your stories and your testimonies. You come up to my booth and you, you talk to me and you tell me where you're from and you know kind of what you've gone through to get to where you're at now. Um, I'm gonna start out. This is about rotational grazing of South Pole cattle, heritage pigs, all kinds of rotational grazing. But first off, who are we? And by we, I mean, this is our team. I may be speaking, but, but Ben, my husband, is as much a part of it as me. Uh, we are VW Family Farm. We have... Anyway. <laughs> you guys are talking to today. So, uh, we're Kevin and Sarah. We have a uh, homestead called Living Traditions Homestead. If any of you don't know, know that. Uh, we have a YouTube channel where we try to teach people how to live a self-sufficient life, grow as much of their own food as they can to kind of get back to a simpler lifestyle. Uh, today we want to talk to you guys though specifically about a question that we get a lot, which is how to turn your homestead into a business. How to be able to leave your job in corporate America or leave whatever kind of job you have and actually live off of your homestead. And that is a question that we get probably more than any other question and hopefully we can do it a little bit of justice today. And uh, we have a little bit of everything. We have a little bit of everything: uh, chickens, ducks, cows, beef, and dairy. We've done goats. Um, we do rabbits. Raise our own poultry. We have 
uh, giant gardens, do tons of preserving, all the things that all you probably also do. And uh, so we're just normal people that are trying to grow and raise as much of our own food as possible, while also financially uh, supporting the life that we live here. And like Kevin said, lots of people want to know how they too can um, leave their corporate jobs and raise their own money on their own land and be uh, financially self-sufficient as well. Um, so, how many of you live in the Ozarks? Okay, so most of you. How many of you by this point have figured out that the Ozarks is not a magic land where there's no need for money? <laughs> Because that is a question that we get a lot from people who want to move to the Ozarks to live off the land because they don't want to live in a place where you need a lot, where you need money. So the biggest misconception I think for, for people is learning that homesteading isn't cheap, homesteading isn't free, uh, there's no such thing as free meat, there's no such thing as free vegetables, there's no such thing as free anything. You need a way to generate income in order to support your family and support the business that you need to grow off of your homestead. And that really is the hardest part for a lot of people to kind of wrap their heads around. So just because you move somewhere to start a homestead doesn't mean that all of the daily expenses that you had wherever you lived before just magically go away. You still have all of the same expenses. It's just that now it's up to you to figure out how to make the money to pay for all of those. And in a lot of cases, people who homestead have expenses that people in the suburbs or in the, in the city, they don't have those expenses. Especially when you leave your job and you want to be self-employed, health insurance is a big one. How are you going to pay for health insurance? Where do you get health insurance? Taxes. You're now 100% 100, 100 responsible for ta paying all of your taxes. And so some of those things can be pretty scary. And those are definitely things that people may not be thinking about when they want to jump ship from their job and work full time on your homestead. So there's really a few different ways or a couple different ways that you can go about preparing to leave your job in corporate America to, to work full time on your homestead. Um, we kind of did a combination of, of both of these ways, but, but really, the main thing is that by the time you leave your job, you need to you need to either have enough money saved up that you can then take some time to grow a business that isn't going to make you any money for a while, or you need to grow your business while you're still working in corporate America, so that by the time you leave, that that your side business will totally replace the money you're leaving behind. So those are really your two options. Like I said, we kind of did a hybrid of that where for years, and first of all, that's the other thing. None of this happens in a month. None of this happens in six months, a year. For us, it took really about seven or eight years of really, really, really working toward the goal of being able to move out of the city and move to the country. So um, we did, for a lot of you maybe know, Dave Ramsey, um, we did Dave Ramsey's plan of becoming debt free. We paid off everything that we owned, including our house. So by the time that we were able to leave the city, uh, everything that we had, we owned, that we were able to, to, to come out to the country and start a life where we can live 100% debt free. And that really is a, a huge part of the plan. One of the reasons why we talk about and are gonna talk a little bit about becoming debt free is because it is the primary way for you to be successful when you're homesteading. If you quit your job and move to a place and have a lot of expenses, a lot of uh, debt, that is just that much more money that you need to earn every single year in order to be profitable and in order for you to be able to pay your bills. But you guys, uh, we understand that it's not easy to pay off your debt, and we also understand that it could take you 10, 15, maybe 20 years to do that. We do encourage you to use Dave Ramsey's system to do that. In order for us to do that, we live like paupers. I mean, our friends and our family, had, they didn't understand what we were doing. We didn't go out to eat. We never went on vacation. We stayed home, we saved money, we paid off our debt so that we could be free. And once we became free from debt, 
everything became a lot easier. I think the line that Dave Ramsey always used that stuck in my, stuck in my head was, live like nobody else so that later you can live like nobody else. And that is so true. When, when our kids were little and we were going through all of this to try to become debt free, we actually we had our kids create one of those paper chains, you know, when you take the little links of paper, and we had this thing strung all the way around our dining room, our kitchen, part of our living room, and every link on that chain represented a thousand dollars worth of debt that we owed. And every time we could take one of those chain links off that chain, we'd tear it up and we'd have a party in the house. I mean, it was like, you know, instead of rice and beans, we had mac and cheese, you know? <laughs> so, but that was like a big deal and the kids got involved and it became a whole family thing. Like, how fast can we do this? How much more can we do? We do? And, you know, I sold my, I, I rode a Harley. I sold my Harley to pay off, you know, seven links worth of chain, you know? And so we made sacrifices and, I'll tell you now that we've been doing this now full time. We've been out in the Ozarks for almost six years now, and I wouldn't trade any minute of the sacrifice to do what we're doing now. So it's absolutely worth it. Okay, sorry, off track. So, how we left corporate America. Well, first of all, and I highly I highly recommend this part. When we were still working full time, we used our money wisely that we did spend to purchase things that we knew we were gonna need when we got to the homestead. And we also spent a lot of time learning the skills that we would need once we got there. If you're gonna take the 10 or more years to be paying off your debts, during that time, it's not like you're just sitting around doing absolutely nothing. We had an urban homestead during that time. We had an acre and a quarter of land in the middle of Gilbert, Arizona, where we, I mean, we, we, were, we were the crazy people. We were the people who, you know, on an acre of land had chickens and goats and pigs and gardens and, you know, all the things that people said you shouldn't be able to do in a desert, we did anyway. And that gave us all of the skills that we needed and it kept us focused on the goal of where we were actually going in the long run. So. So it's not like during this time you, you need to put everything else on hold, uh, but everything that you should that you do should be working toward that goal. Well, one thing I want to say before I move on is that every weekend, every long weekend, every vacation time that we had from work, we were just busting butt. We were busting butt making a an urban homestead busting butt so that when we got 100% to our homestead, we knew what we were doing. We could almost recreate what we had created in our backyard into our new place, but just bigger. We were already thinking about what works, what doesn't work. We want to do this, we don't want to do that. So even if you're feeling stuck in the city or in the suburbs or in a mortgage or whatever it is, you can be looking forward to what you're going to do in the future when you build your business, leave your job, and do this full time. So basically, regardless of how you do it, whether you uh, save money and move and just quit your job, or whether you develop your homestead business on the side and start building that up so that someday your side business can be your full time business and you can leave your job, regardless of the way that you do this, one thing you must have is a business plan. Because without a business plan, you don't have a vision, you don't have a plan, and you're gonna get scattered all over the place. And hopefully, if any of you watch us on YouTube, the one thing you do know about Kevin and I is that we plan. We plan a lot. We plan all the time. And when our plans don't work out, we change them or they evolve. And just like a business plan, we're gonna talk about our business plan and you know where it was originally and where it is now. It's not a failed business plan if it doesn't work out. It just evolves. It evolves. We found Clyde with Clyde's Garden Planners. And you guys know we absolutely love our Clyde's Garden Planner that we got from La La Farms. So y'all, check out Clyde's Garden Planner and we have a few to give away. So. Hide and watch and see how you can enter to win a Clyde's Garden Planner.